yet live. Let me share this thing. Welcome to the pre-show. Da, 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 da. Yeah. We're going to talk about PBA League Bowling. Waco Wonder versus the Dallas Strikers. Season yeah. on the line. Portland Lumberjacks versus Las Vegas Aces. One seed is not on the line, but the one seed is on the line. Yeah, we got two uh, two important matches, and for very different reasons. One at the top, one at the very bottom. Yeah, yeah, we got a the winning. The men are going to enjoy one of them very much. Actually, it doesn't really matter because it's going to happen regardless. But yeah. So, Darren, you're on the LAX. Who would you so rather? Who would? Yeah, vote the whole right side of the screen. Um. <laughs> Who would you guys rather win today? Because um, one of these two teams is going to have a chance to actually make a little bit of a run because they bully you. They both bully you next week. So they have a chance to win today and then beat you, which would mean you would have to win one of your other two matches either against us tomorrow on TV or the following in Akron. Wait, we bowled them both still? I thought we bowled the strikers twice already. I think you bowled them both, bowled or you just bowled match. Huh. No, we bowled the we bowled the bat strikers twice. You already have? No. We're two and zero against the strikers. Yeah, uh yeah, we first bowled them bowled twice. Portland. So we Portland. already locked them out. So So preferably the strikers win. Yeah. So if the strikers uh, win, then it's over. Yeah. Uh, the LAX will bowl Waco on bowl T V. No, and we want in Akron, and you will bowl Portland on TV. Because mm. we win the tiebreaker against the Strikers, right? Yeah, because you're two and zero against them. However, if they go three and zero, and you go zero and three, their last three this matches, is what then we want out. to win. We, we want Waco to win because then if we bowl Waco on TV and we beat them, we automatically are on because we have the tiebreaker over both of them. So even if our only win is against Waco and they win out and we tie them, we win the tiebreaker. So we need Waco to win and then we beat Waco. I think but either it, way, as long as yeah, we beat Waco, we're good. The easiest one would be Dallas wins because you've already beat them twice. Yeah. So it wouldn't matter if they tied you. Well, yeah, because they can only get to five wins yeah. anyway. Right? Or you guys yeah. could just yeah. win and then nothing matters. Yeah. yeah. But it hasn't been looking promising for you guys as of late. Or we'll just win three and then we'll call it good and hopefully we get to fifth. I mean, for yeah, sure. yeah. It, doesn't really, it doesn't really help you too much, but we gotta put the pieces together at some point. You guys you guys have such good it bowlers. It does up here. Team. It helps you up here. You guys have such good bowlers on your team. And I just don't know what happens every week. Yeah. You guys got any insight on um, Don't worry how you guys are going to put we'll it together? Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out, okay? <laughs> it's a work so, in progress, just like anything else. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. So who we got in the other matchup? Obviously, I mean, that yeah, matchup is pretty just... important for you guys. But what about the Waco Wonder versus the Dallas Oh, here. Strike? We'll, we'll give you the uh, betting it odds for, for that match first. Um, oh, I just had them pulled up. But I believe uh, Dallas is actually a fairly heavy favorite. I believe they are minus 200 to win. That's a lot. Yeah. I don't feel like there are a lot of surprises there considering that team is loaded. And I feel like they're just getting the shortest end of the stick in the league. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. They're minus 200. Waco is plus 150. Uh, But Waco is undefeated on TV. I was going to say, Waco's got, what, three wins or two wins? Uh, they had they two both wins. have two. They got two wins, and they've only won on TV. Yes. Two. Just saying. So it's, is it destiny to go three? And then they could have, and then they lose out, and their only wins are on TV. They're, they're, <laughs> That'd be crazy. Not all teams bowl three. Wait, do only some teams bowl three times on TV? <laughs> then they would have wished they got yeah. to the yeah. playoffs. Some teams bowl three. What a shame. Because you guys yeah. haven't bowled on TV yeah. yet, right? No. So you guys bowl on TV here, and then an Akron, and then that's it. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So Dallas actually has a um, yes, sir, a little more than twelve pins a game higher 
average than Waco, which is kind of wild. 12 pins. Did, did Dallas still have they the, have the highest average still? against in the league? Yes, by, by uh, over 10 pins. Or um, not quite 10 pins, actually. Yeah, so uh, Waco, Waco averages 203, and their opponents average 212. And Dallas is averaging 215 and a half, and their opponents are averaging 226. Wow. That's tough. That is That's tough. I was going to say, we did it twice That's to them where we bowled That's not so great. Tough. And then... Like we haven't been bowling great all year, but we've just been winning. And then we bowled them, and we shot our highest. I think our highest four games of the league have come against them. I don't. It feels like. Really. It. I think that's how we've been too. <laughs> I think that's what they call having the digits. I just think that they set the pair up so nice for us to just crack them. Yeah, so yeah, they don't really have any shim writers on the pair. Yeah, like Tom used to be that guy, but now he's just kind of average in terms of. How much he hooks the lane in power. I got a bunch of straight players over there. But I think uh, I was talking about it with a couple guys on my team. And they said Dallas, I was like, oh, they're just like not really winning. They're bowling well, but they're just not winning. And he said, a couple of those guys said, Dallas doesn't, doesn't really have any like energy guys on their team. They don't have any guys to like start up, start the fire. Um, maybe even guys that are going to chirp at the other team a little bit or start start a little something if it starts going poorly. Would um, that not which, be Tommy, or is Tommy just kind of out of it? Uh, I just think Tommy's not – I think Tommy's not that guy to, like, start the fire when none of his other teammates are really like that either. Uh, is he, is he yeah. the one to just keep the fire alive? Yes, yeah. I think that needs to be – I don't say needs to be, but I think that is – snodgrass but i think it's one of those hasn't really had a ton of success individually so maybe doesn't feel like he's in the position to bring that energy that speak to that. He's, he's kind of the, the newest he's the newer face on the team you know in the tour yeah. he's got he's kind of the freshest and i feel like there's a big disconnect in terms of that on on our team because you got the mega veterans in belmo and and uh, Dom, and I feel like sometimes it's kind of hard to be like, "Hey, I'm gonna start something." Because it's yeah, kind of like it just kind of feels out of place, <laughs> right? A little bit at times, yeah. I never feel that way. <laughs> That's I what also... I always liked about the Kingpins. You know, being on that team was it, it was always it was always like we always meshed well because we were all around the same age. We all had similar experience and. We can say whatever we need to say to whoever, but yeah, I, it's not like we were ever walking on eggshells. No, and I, I think that's one of the good things about being on a team where like either you're really close with a lot of the guys on your team, like you're you hang out with a lot of them, or you're all kind of close in age and experience where, okay, you can say whatever you want, do whatever you want, and nobody's really going to take too much offense to it because you're all close enough to, mm -hmm. you know, whether you need to tell somebody, hey, I like, I need you to step up or whether you just go off and um, start chirping at the other team, other guys are going to, you know, respond well, because you're all just kind of around the same age experience. Nobody feels out of place on that team, at least my team. But even then, like Barnes is a mega veteran. I do really like what you told me about him, what he said to you guys, if you're cool with me sharing that. Oh yeah. No, he, he, uh, he told us he was, he told us, he said, yeah, like, listen, all you guys, like, if you guys don't, he said, you guys, in my mind, we have three 10th frame bowlers on the team. We have three anchor bowlers on the team. It's you, you, and you. And he pointed to me, BJ, and Marshall. Um, and he said, so one of you guys is going to take it. Um, whoever has the best look, take it. And then you got to want it. And then after that, he was like, and if none of you guys want it and none of you guys feel comfortable, put me in the 10th because I can't catch any more hate for the 10th frame than I already have in my career. And on top of that, if I miss, I miss. I'm willing to take the hit for the team. Like if 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 I miss, I will gladly take the blame for us losing. It doesn't it doesn't matter to me because I'd rather us have a better chance of winning and me take all the blame than you guys be uncomfortable up there sitting in the tenth needing a strike to win. So that was I mean that and it got you. I feel like you also got to have a guy like that on the team that just doesn't care, right? Like he cares 
only about winning. Doesn't care anything about if he strikes, splits, gets five, or sits out and tells us where to play. Who is that guy for Waco? Because Waco's got like Waco's got a couple, much like you guys, um, on LAX. Waco's got a couple guys that are like way up there, veterans. Um, like Parker's way out. Um, Tom Hess, mega veteran. DJ kind of fits the middle gap, and then you got Mitch, Zach Wilkins. You got what? One more player on the team, right? Stu. Oh, Stu. And, Stu's kind of the middle too. Stu and DJ are in the middle. Yeah, like two, two guys two. up top, two in Stu. the middle, and two fresh faces. What do you, do you think? That's kind of an issue where they aren't meshing, or do you think it's? a benefit that they have almost like three different generations on their team. I don't think it comes as organically as far as yeah. chemistry. I think it's like, more personality feel, driven than career driven. I feel like New York or New Jersey has always been a little more organic in, in their players meshing and they don't have to try as hard. But I feel Is like it more important like, to pick people that are just friends with each other or players that are amazing. <laughs> Uh, maybe not necessarily friends, but just guys that get along and can com communicate well together. Like, like our generation, for the most part, a lot of us played college, so we were on the same page in, in terms of that. So that makes that process a lot more seamless. Um, but for the guys with generation gaps, that communication is going to be different. Just how they talk about bowling, how they speak to each other. Um, I just don't think it happens as easily. I'll be listening for it on the show. Um, because Mitch talking about communication, Mitch said Parker always yesterday when we were bowling doubles, Mitch always said that Parker uses the word pass instead of shot. Yeah. So I'll be listening for it on the show today. Um, he's, he just always be like, all right, make a good pass at it here. <laughs> just like just a different. And like you said, it's just like a different, sometimes it's different <laughs> lingo, lingo. Sometimes it's different, complete pages of communications, all of it. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it, it. I feel like it just kind of. I mean, even when we bought, so we just bought them um for this week. So we had them on the bowl TV, um, match. It just felt like they were extremely stagnant. Um, I mean, obviously we we bowled really really well, so it kind of we kind of came out and gave them a, a little bit of an uppercut and may have shocked them a bit, but um. It just also felt like, I don't know, they just, they felt very stale, very, uh, like, like I said, no energy. And it just, it's hard to compete. Like we were having a bunch of fun on our side and they're just kind of like, they're throwing shots and then they, no momentum. They're almost kind of waiting for the results to create momentum rather than. And we're against the strikers, right? Uh, no, we would wake up. Waco. Yeah. And it just felt like they were waiting for the results to, to create momentum for them rather than them uh, just kind of kind of coming together and creating something themselves. Um, I think Hess is a really good um, team player in that aspect. And I think he led off for them and he started both games really well. Um, but it just like, it was kind of like that one bad shot or the one, you know, that didn't strike go off and they just were never able. Well, yeah, I, I think that's, <clears throat> I, I also think that's a similar problem with, uh, with the strikers. Like I think it's with both the strikers and the wonder it's like both of them don't necessarily have like a consistent energy throughout. It's like, they might have like, the Waco Wonder, unfortunately for them, like statistically speaking, Hess has not been the best bowler on their team. So it's hard for the hype guy to also be one of the lower guys who's not always in. Because if the yeah. hype guy is in, then he can bring the energy to the team. But if he's on the outside, it's like, okay, now he's waiting for something to get excited about. And just be all hyped up. What do we think? What do we think? Uh, if you guys had to pick, what do we think? Who's winning? I think it's more personality driven than like who they are as a bowler too. I think guys that aren't outgoing don't 
really get hype like that. It's hard to force that out of a bowler who's like quiet and soft spoken. So then you throw a shot and you want to expect them to get loud and stuff. I think that's the problem. You can't force guys to just be rowdy or be like the spark plug. And I see I think you see that more in the league than the other way around where guys can be more personable on the lane versus just bowling. And that's actually what this guy right here, Adam, said. He said, the biggest I mean, problem I have with my men's team is... Nice, calm, cool, and collected. So it's like, it's hard to get hype. That's what this guy said right here. He said, the biggest problem I have with my team is I have to be the cheerleader every week, and it's exhausting. And it is exhausting if you have to bring it, and that's not who you are. Like, if you're not the guy that's, like, the natural cheerleader or the guy who's going to cheer yeah. on your team every week, it's hard for you to, like, bring that energy. It's It's not that it's fake. It's just a little more work. Yeah. For sure. I mean, if we um, look at the standings, right. I feel like the guys at the top, there might be some merit to picking your friends, you know? I mean, not – again, I don't want to say friends, but guys that you get along with. The high rollers, they got a lot of guys that kind of hang out together. While the whole team may not be the case, they've found a way to use whatever chemistry they have with each other and kind of bring those groups together. And here they are. The Lumberjacks have always been really good chemistry-wise. They've had the same guys on the team for a long time. Uh, the splitters, kind of the same deal. You guys have – I think I feel like the splitters and the kingpins have very similar chemistries. You got the young guys kind of led by a veteran that doesn't necessarily care about the individual aspect. They just want to win. And then yeah. it comes to the bottom half of the standings. I feel like that's where just looking at the teams and seeing how they're struggling. I feel like that disconnect could be th their problems. <clears throat> the, the strikers is the one that kind of throws me through a loop and it's probably just because they're getting their heads beating every time. I would say, I think it's just bad matchups on the strikers. Yeah, because that like, team you would think it would have pretty good chemistry because you got four guys that pretty much hang out together all the time on that team. Yeah, and they're it's average, like, and they're averaging a lot. Right, like they're averaging two fifteen, which in the so, league they're kind of the one off. Yeah, and it, it's hard. I so do you guys think chemistry over talent? I mean, if you think about it, this is the. These are the top 48 bowlers on the tour. Everyone's plenty talented enough. You know, whether guys have won or not, everyone I think is good enough to win that's in the league. So when it boils down to it, maybe chemistry does matter a little more. I'm, I would agree. I mean, that's my stance. Yeah. But I think it just helps keep well, the flow a little better. I think, uh, I think we see Dallas pull it off today. What do you guys think, Darren, Kev? I am also going with Dallas. Kev, what are you, who are you picking? Waco. I'm picking Waco as Waco. well. We'll have a split screen here. A little 50-50 ball. A little 50-50. Yeah, Drop down below in the comments what you guys think as well. Dallas or Waco for the first match. They just, they, they've bowled so well. They're going to go undefeated on TV. I mean, I could and see it. And that's going to be their only wins. I could see it. It's just one of those, I don't know, I feel like uh, Dallas kind of had a little bit of a heartbreaker loss there against Portland um, on Bowl TV uh, a couple days ago. Went to a five-man roll-off. Fifth person kind of got in um, and ended up losing that one. So, I don't know. I think I think we, we see a bounce back. Um, both both teams are coming off a, a loss, so backs up against the wall. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm curious to know. So all I'm looking at the standings. All the teams that are in, they have an X. The, the Strikers and the Wonders both have minuses next to their team names. What does that mean? Um, uh, I would think that would mean they're eliminated, but they're not. Yeah, every everyone had that before. I think it's they're uh, currently like, out. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes currently sense. Out. I was like, we're the only team that doesn't have anything next to our, our team name. Yeah. Because you're not currently out or in. You we're in limbo. Bubble. The bubble. We're about to be. All right, so we got a we got a split screen. What about the second matchup? We got the matchup for the one seed, which would be the Lumberjacks versus the Aces. Both of these guys bowling well. Both of them have uh, players on the double show, which is happening tonight. I know the it won't air till the 14th. The Aces. WNBA. Is this the WNBA? <laughs> Las Vegas Aces. The High WNBA, rollers. The Aces. High rollers. I was looking at WNBA stats. High rollers. The Las Vegas Lobster Rolls. The Las Vegas Lobster I mean, pretty much. 
<laughs> is that better? That is a little bit better. Yeah, this one's interesting. Uh, for that's betting odds that's, purposes, that's the team that's actually bowling on TV. Vegas is slightly favorited. Um, they are minus one twenty-five to win. Portland minus one hundred six. So it's kind of almost a pick 'em. I think this one's going to be a pretty even match. They expect it to go to a roll-off. And uh, yeah, I think this one's going to be a good one. I think this one could be. Uh, we're going on Earl Anthony. If it played anything like the Earl Anthony in um, in the main bay, wow, they were hard. Um, but if we're playing on, you know, we're obviously going to be in the arena. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know scoring pace wise how it's going to look, um, but it they are. I think they're the first match. I don't know that for sure. But I want to say I, I'm, not, I'm not 100 sure. Either. This is the first time. Smart this is the first time Portland's won on TV. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, yeah. This will be first time Portland's bowled on TV outside of Portland. This um, is the first time that they're bowling on TV without Portland. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't see it being an issue at all for them though, because I mean they're they're headed by Timmy Mack, and they have an energy guy that isn't <laughs> so he could just provide unlimited energy no matter what. He yeah. also and I, I feel like that plays a really big factor in their success. <laughs> they are going up against a um, a Michigan guy who I would say somewhat be a, a hometown guy. I would they also you, have a Michigan I guy in Tom Smallwood. I was told about an hour ago that, that he has 35 people in the stands. Andrew? Andrew has 35 people just for himself. Yeah, so Andrew's going to have a bunch of guys there. Um, which we didn't mention for uh, the Dallas Strikers, Frank Snodgrass, also a Michigan guy. Ah, yeah. He's going to have some people in the stands as well. Um, but, yeah, so we got actually quite a few Michigan people on the TV show. Um, so it would be interesting to see. Um, this match could be, get real out. we got the Smallwoods, Sam versus the uh, the Andrew crew. Big bowling state. <laughs> I was yeah, gonna say it's so, it's so crazy because of that too. Like you would say, like the Las Vegas had the hometown advantage at the last tournament. Mm -hmm. However, Mitch had a bunch of people show up, and then all of a sudden they were like, they were. It wasn't like they were the home team anymore, just because Mitch had a huge crew show up cheering for them. I got a question though: Do we actually have home teams other than Portland? Well, with this year, I would say yes, because we traveled we all over the country. Like, but this I feel is like we the Motown like people, Muscle home team. People that live in these places that we're named after aren't necessarily fans just because they live there. I would say, well, and I think not. I think also not before. yet. Not yet, yeah. But this year, I feel like it's not really an advantage because let's say <laughs> instead of Vegas bowling Waco, let's say they bowl either the Strikers or LAX, where we. Have people that are from Vegas. I guarantee you. Like Mitch had seven guys by himself. If Jake's bowling or if I'm bowling, we probably have 20, 30, 40 people there for, for us instead. 100%. So then, then we become the hometown favorites just because we have locals on the team. Yeah. I, I would say it's more so the hometown team as of now is more so the people that are. Um, on the team and from not necessarily that location the name yeah. of the team but we bowl we bowl motown um tomorrow on the show and i think that one's going to be to where they're actually pretty much a, a hometown team because you know obviously we don't have anybody from michigan um but they have ej who's very big in you know he's not far from detroit you know simo won the masters here last year he's got a bunch of friends that live here um so, also, just two of the biggest names in bowling yeah, on the same team. Also, just two of the biggest names in bowling. So, I think um, I think you're going to see quite a bit of a crowd for them uh, come so, tomorrow. And Simon's got the big connects; like he's friends with a lot of the Detroit guys. Mm -hmm. I would say you get Simo and EJ both to pull a decent crowd there, and then you got Zach Tackett as well on that show, and Justin Knowles, who is a hometown yeah. kid. This is his home bowling alley, pretty much. Yeah. That yeah, team so is like loaded with people who are actually from Detroit area. It's going to be a huge, uh, huge fan uh, fan base for them. So hopefully we can quiet them down tomorrow. Good luck. That'd be <laughs> a fun one. But who are we? Detroit I don't think the Detroit <laughs> crowd gets very quiet. 
just a heads up on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this, uh, this Portland Vegas, I think it's going to be really good. And I think it's, uh, like I said, it's very important for a different reason. Um, first Matt, or I think, I think Waco and Dallas bowl second, but, um, that match is a, you know, a if you lose, you go home. And this one is you're already in Portland, uh, but you want to get that by. So I think this one, I don't know. I, I just feel like, man, like Vegas, it's, it, it's hard to bet against them because I feel like they're, they're bowling so well. They're a very good team. Um, they have that chemistry factor. They're going to have a big fan base today. And I think they thrive off that. Um, but then at the same time, it just feels like Portland has everything go their way. Feels I like, would agree. It feels, feels like, like Portland Portland always has everything go their way. of bowling. This is the Portland PBA league. It's just, I feel it like just it feels like they get, they get so many breaks. They get very fortunate at the right times. And it, I'm not at all saying that they're a bad team and they don't deserve to be where they're at because they're a very good team. It just seems like when they need something to happen, it happens. Or when they need a break, from the other team to go their way, it happens. It's like they just and have that, eternal momentum. Yeah, to where, you know, they get into a, a five-person roll-off. Uh, Jacob, who hasn't been bowling a bunch, has to go up and bowl for um, uh, Dallas and gets, what, six or seven, whatever it is. So then Arturo Fuck, needs... You got six, yeah. Yeah, Arturo needs seven to win, right? So Yeah, yeah. when you have your sixth man essentially getting up there and nutting them. Tough yeah. to beat. Yeah, he was the guy. He's the guy that, you know, probably won't even be eligible for the league next year. Yeah. And he's up there striking every shot in the league, basically. Well, he'll, he'll be, be eligible, eligible he's on the team. Because he's on a team. Yeah. Is that a rule still? I don't know. Yeah. We should I hope out. that's the case. You scare yeah. me a little bit. <laughs> I don't it has know. been in years past. Yeah, no, I think I. You're right. I think in years past it has been. I, I assume it will be as well. But, um, and the same the same thing happened this year. Like he technically like wasn't eligible to be picked until the last round, and he's bowled mm-hmm. a lot this year. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think he may be their energy guy. Yeah, he among is all the energy, energy guys on their team. <laughs> they have they have a bunch of energy guys on the team. They have. Yeah. Troop, who's like the ultimate energy guy. Then they have Arturo, who is also whenever he's gets to bowl he is also the ultimate energy guy i would vote him the mvp of the league in terms of energy arturo has the second has the third most amount of shots of that team i thought you were seeing the entire league um no that would have to bowl a lot of fifth frames fifth and tenth he's got the most amount of shots in the league i believe Stu, yeah he bowls a lot of tenth frames well, and he's bowling amazing in the league. Yeah, he's bowling. yeah. If so they were two and nine, probably in the in the running for MVP. Who do you guys think? Speaking of these players on these teams, um, if you had to go through all these four matchups, who do you think is going to be sitting out today? Sitting out? Ooh, it's tough to say because none of us have thrown a single ball in the Arena Bay yet. No, so it's going to be a little gamble. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a kind of a gamble regardless because, you know, you get two shots a lane after they re oil the lanes. It's like, how do you really get a good assessment of what's happening or who's doing what? Magic. Let I'm going to see the, uh, the betting favorite and say Parker doesn't bowl for Waco. Um, I know he bowled the first game. But he bowled on us. TV every time and bowled well. Yeah. Yeah. He bowled the first game against us and his look was. Not good. Not good. He uh, he broke up a split, made the spare, and then split the second the second shot. Pulled himself. Who, who sat on the bench on TV for them? Hess. Uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. came in shoot the spare. Uh, but Hess, I think, yeah, at least went three for four, I believe, against us. So his look was pretty good. But again, um, bowling on a different surface, basically a different bowling alley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shapes. I still like feel like got to be pretty similar. Um, I like so, Wilkins to bowl for sure. Yeah, I would and agree. Stu as well. I think yeah. Stu Wilkins and Mitch are going to bowl guaranteed. I think it's probably between Hess and Parker for the wonder. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Look, one foot there. They probably decide whether or not Parker's Hass luck is close the enough. Doubles, since Hess bowled the doubles, I would say Hess bowls. However, I mean, dude, like anything can and happen. Hess well. And Hess bowled well. I, th- I think anything can happen. I think that yeah. if the left is good, Parker bowls. I would agree. And then Dallas, I'm imagining. Did he win the world championship here? I think it was Parker. Vegas. I want to say it was Vegas as well. Okay. I think it was Vegas. No, that was Vegas. The left yeah. is easy in Vegas. That was insane. Came back from 24th, made the show, ran the ladder, bang. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. World champion. Wow. All right, so we, we think we think Parker sits. <laughs> yeah, I think Parker and I think Jacob for Dallas. You think Jacob sits? I would agree. Jacob hasn't bowled a lot lately. I, I agree. And – this also hasn't bowled well in the opportunities that he's had in the league so far. Yeah. Yeah. So statistically I would, I, speaking, statistically p- speaking, DJ Archer should be the one sitting. Or Hess. He's he sat the first game. He was the one sitting out the first game against us, and then came in and um, and bowled uh, the second said, game. I was going to say, so statistically, it should be either Hess or him, and then statistically speaking, on the other team, on the other side of it, it should be Sean Maldonado. Maldi's yeah. got a fifty percent strike percentage and an eighty-one percent really? field frame percentage, where the next would be Jake, who's got a fifty-three percent strike percentage but a ninety-four percent spare conversion. Yeah, so, and that's why Jake's probably just like a good leadoff guy. He's going to get you a filled frame. He's going to tell you what happened on that lane. Good shot maker. Probably strike the second time around. Can't Can't go guy. Yeah, I feel like Jake, Tommy, Bill. Those are kind of the almost guarantees. Um, and then it's going to be between Snodgrass, Buttruff, and Maldonado. I, I think Frank Bowles. I, I agree. I think as Butters a local seems- guy too. I think it's got to be Butters that sits on that one, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, yeah. like, same thing with the Waco. I think it just boils down to, like, is the left really nice? Because if it is Jacob Bull or Jacob Bull. Because Parker did ball on the show last year here. Yeah. Didn't, it, yeah. didn't Jacob lose? Didn't Jacob lose to Belmo here at the World Championship? He did. Two years yeah, ago, Jacob's bowled years ago, well, three years ago. Jacob's bowled well here. The, the left has been decent in this building. That was mm-hmm. a while ago. I think the reasons for him sitting are not because of he his bowling look, abilities. He just doesn't look like Jacob. It, yeah, he just doesn't look like he's in a great headspace right. right now. And his team probably knows that. Yeah. So we think, yeah, because he wasn't even there when it was in Vegas. Correct. So, yeah, we'll see if that plays into factor. What about for tonight's match or the the second match or the first match i don't even know which match it is but what about yeah. the other match where we're looking at las Ooh. vegas versus <laughs> portland this is the hard one like vegas is the hardest one to to choose i think vegas just sits to be honest i think vegas just sits thomas larson oh true yeah i mean i think it depends also on the left how I good that agree. same same deal is the, um, the other match, Puico. I would agree. Russo does have the lowest strike percentage on the team, but he's like in the middle of the pack in terms of spare conversion rate. Yeah, you feel like Andrew's going to bowl for sure. Sean's going to bowl for sure. AJ Johnson's going to bowl for sure. Bowling for sure. AJ's bowling for sure. So it's really between Russo and Larson. Yeah, Russo and Larson. Sean also bowled on the show here last year as well. Yeah. How do you feel about them putting Ogle in the tenth frame all the time? I don't see. I it. think they see something that we don't. Yeah, I would agree, and I don't I know don't what like it, it is. But... I don't know either, but I mean, if they believe in the guy, more power to him. Yeah, man. That's oh, all you you saw it. Yeah, you just got to have your team believe in you, and that's really you saw, uh, all it comes down to. Whenever he bowled in Portland, him in the tenth. It struggled yeah. quite a bit. Him in the 10th frame last year was not very clutch. Yeah, it's yeah, one of those you give, you give yourself enough opportunities. Obviously, you're going to 
they're yeah, going to come yeah. through. I mean, right? He goes on to the the shark show, needs a tenth frame or needs a spare in the tenth to uh to win. Gets up in ten pins and um, saw him hesitate there a little bit, balked, came back, but then ace the spare. So, um, you think you you put yourself in in that position enough? Eventually, you're going to start to feel a bit more comfortable. Um, but at the same time, bowling for yourself versus bowling for five other guys also kind of puts you in a, a little different mindset as where as well, where it's like, hey, maybe you, you wanted a bit more, maybe you know you think about it like hey i don't want to let my team down well and then causes some other thoughts to run through so we bowled them in the doubles um in the title match last year mitch and i and he was definitely the superstar partner of the two um mm-hmm. he didn't really miss and sean kind of let it slip away so i you've seen it both ways and i think for him it's like like you said you give someone enough opportunities they'll figure it out yeah like we are, we all know that he's amazing. It's just a figure it out. And like they said, if you keep putting him in the tent during the course of the week on TV, whatever, he, he's going to figure it out because they're making it to Portland. It's and also it's also one of those like you have probably the league MVP on your team at least at the current moment with Andrew, and he's I don't think he's been in the tenth frame at all. I think. So I Andrew's anchored here and there, there, and he's what I've seen. Anchor Andrew's anchored here and there. He's also sat like a match or two or a game or two in the match, which is surprising, being he a guy that's probably guys. the best statistically on his team. Mm-hmm. Um, with like a seventy-five percent strike rate, he is statistically like the best guy on his team. It's just, I think he just also knows when it's not his time. I don't, I, which is good for him. I don't think he forces it at all. I guess yeah, I think he's the no, one that makes the decisions when Amaletto's not here. Yeah, I agree. Talking to him last week or our last match when he sat the first game, I also sat and we were just warming up on the the warm up lanes together, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I just I didn't feel like I had it, and uh, I got to make the decisions, and it's hard, you know, if you're the one making those decisions and you don't have it, and you said to put yourself in, then you know, your teammates might be thinking, "Hey, why are you putting yourself in when your looks not very good?" Yeah, so, yeah, I feel like he's making the right judgment calls at the moment. Clearly they're uh, tied for the lead, so it couldn't be too bad. Exactly. What's the payoff for winning the league? That would be $16,667 a guy. Bang. So winning today, nothing, but winning the whole thing, 16,000, 16 and two thirds. Sets you up for success moving forward. Yeah, it's a it's a nice payday if you win. Take yeah, that. Nothing wrong with a little extra cash. Pays more than the doubles title. How much does the the doubles pay? Is that ten thousand? Thirty. 15 so fifteen, 15 a guy. A man? It was ten a man last year. Thirty. Arturo gets his energy directly from his hair. That's a fair point. Is that why I had my best year when my hair was blue? Yeah, you got to change it back. It's funny. We were I well, bowled beside Arturo at the Masters, and uh, he bowled the first day. wasn't great. His hair was uh, green, I believe, or like a an off green. And he came back in the second day, bleach blonde hair. And uh, I was like, yeah. I was like, man, I don't remember his hair being blonde yesterday. And uh, I think Nolan was talking about it. Nolan went up and asked him, he's like, hey, did you, did you change your hair? And he's like, "He's like, yeah, didn't like myself yesterday. Had to change my hair. <laughs> I like that. Instead like of, that. Uh, you know, instead of anything else, he just changed his hair. And he changed the better. vibes. What a move. Yeah. And I'm kind of going for the same thing. Yeah. Didn't like myself last week. I know you're changing the haircut to short, short. Short, short. High school Darren's back in effect. You look like Mikey. Thank you. You know, when people call me Mikey, like fans, I don't even hesitate. I'll just go, I'll just shake their hand, say what's up. They'll have a picture of Mikey. I'll sign it. I won't sign it as Mikey. I'll sign it as me. I was going to say, do you sign it as Mikey? So we, uh, we actually had one year where these these couple of kids came up to us and they said, hey, can you sign our, uh, our autograph book? And we're like, yeah, yeah. They had the pictures and the points or whatever. But it was um, in alphabetical order that year. 
So um, the first kid came up. Hey, Michael, can you sign this? Looking at me. I sign over Mikey. Hand it to Mikey. He signs over me. The next kid, same thing. That's funny. That's good. It doesn't even phase us now. We just we just roll with it. Even our parents call us by uh, the opposite names. names. But I mean, they I feel like parents do that time. all the time. Guys, how do you think we would fare on a team together? Huh. Be units. We'd run the world. Unbeatable. We would be Unbeatable. units. The accountability would be so high, and no one would be afraid to be like, hey, man, we think you should do this. And then I feel like the guy that's holding the ball would be like, yeah, man, let's do it. Yeah. No hesitations, nothing, full send. I think it's that same thing where it's like you throw a bad one, split or whatever, like – you know, coming back, the guys aren't like upset or like, uh, you know, pissed off that you, you did bad. It's one of those, like, it's a way more comforting feeling, uh, coming back to a group that isn't pissed off that you, you threw a bad shot. It's a, we got you kind of deal. Not a, Oh God, what are we going to do now? Yeah. Yeah. But Darren hates league. Apparently I according to league. Chris Sage, I hate league. But not the PBA league. Come on now. PBA league. Oh. Yeah. Uh, do we do we pick who's sitting in this one? Oh, we did for Vegas. We assumed probably Thomas or probably Russo. Thomas. High percentage. Oh, the Lumberjacks a much more difficult pick. Yeah, Lumberjacks. I feel like Smallwood's actually set out a decent amount. Um, and Smalls is. I don't see him sitting out. Smalls is incredible. Like. Your six yeah. man is between Andy's Arturo, front here. the oh, MVP oh, in energy, and the then Smalls. The he's uh, still Jason what? Graham sitting. The Smalls still a top sixteen player this year. She's pretty up there, isn't he? I think so. Do you want me to give you the statistical who should sit? Sure. Sure. Oh well, I'll give you the statistical. Prather should sit, but stats wise, he's only a fifty percent strike rate and an eighty five percent spare rate. And then Wes Malott is who I think will sit. I think Prather is going to bowl because he's bowling very well right now. I think mm -hmm. he's on the come up. Bolt struggled at the Masters. Didn't seem like he was in the best headspace, but he looks really dialed in. He's throwing a great. He had a he had a lesson with Jazz now last week at the Masters. So anything that could be a little off, I think they address that. Um, I like I like Prather to bowl this week for sure. Arenas where Smallwood made his presence felt. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, yeah, I, I can't imagine. Chris Barnes, but. I can't imagine Smallwood sitting. I could see. I, I don't see West sitting either, just for the fact of you know he's franchise. He just West. Player. So he's the franchise so player. Timmy has a hundred and ninety-seven percent belief in him, and I think that definitely makes the players bowl better. Yeah. Because my, my one good week on tour this year, he was pretty much – I didn't even ask for help. He was just in my corner like the whole time checking up on me. And he just kept telling me that I am better than what I think right now. There's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. He just has all these reasons to, to get you to believe that you are where you are for a reason and that you are not you – know, regardless of the results, like you're not what you, those results are telling you you are. Yeah. I, I, would, I would bet – Maybe it just depends on the, how the left is because I, I could see Graham sitting. I don't think Arturo sits, although Arturo was the last one to throw in the roll off. So, um, it's the biggest coin toss. Maybe his look wasn't that great. Roll a six sided uh, die, and I'm picking whatever rolls on. Yeah. Yeah, the, statistically, that, that Prather, tough. Arturo, or Wes Malott, but I would I would shade to more Arturo or Graham. I think in terms of this team, I don't like the stats. Yeah. Or I don't think the stats matter as much. Especially on TV. It's not sitting. Um, I, yeah, I mean, Prather and Troop for sure. Not sitting. I'm sticking my dice. History was hitting up. We fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I know what uh, Simonelli's had some success in the in there. I think Rhino's had some success in the building. Um, obviously, we saw Parker have you know that was he didn't necessarily bowl the greatest on TV, but um, had a good run last year at the Masters. Martell, uh, same way. Uh, yeah, I don't see the left being bad. Yeah, I could see Arturo sitting. I think the lefties bowl. So we we go Arturo and uh, Thomas Larson. I would agree. Let me get your guys' final picks because I got some I got some people to pick up before the doubles here tonight at six. So let me get your final picks. Who you guys think's winning each matchup? I got the Lumberjacks and the Strikers. I got the Strikers and Vegas. Waco, Lumberjacks. Oh, man, kid is high on Waco. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Pack, who you got? I got... I got Waco and I think Las Vegas. They just got, I think they're going to have a ton of people in the crowd. And I think they're going to, um, I think they got a ton of people in the crowd and they're going to just. It's the only reason I'm picking. I think they're finally going to get lucky. They're going to get, lucky. someone else is going to get lucky against the Lumberjacks. Jacks. Yeah. I just think it's one of those, uh, they thought they were going to be the home team in Vegas and they weren't. Um, so I think one that gives them a little extra fuel for this week, they're already, a they run on energy and run on, uh, that kind of drive already. Plus you add, they're going to have a bunch of people in the stands cheering for them. Yeah. I get to see them bowling some big scores. Although Prather's had a lot of success in this building. Troops had success in this building. Um, yeah. I think that, that one's going to be a fun one to watch. I just like Portland because I feel like they're the ironclad standard for the league. Like they're just – I mean, just it, you, you can't go the wrong right way. And Portland. they're headed by Tim Mac. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's team bowling. Well, yeah. we will uh, – we'll just have to wait and see. We got one thirty on FS1 Eastern Time is your show, so that will be about – 40 minutes from now you guys tune in and we will uh we'll catch you guys i'll probably be watching because mitch is my guy and i want him to i want him to lay some up strike every shot and watch him win and give uh give these lax boys something to worry about yeah he's gonna get a little uh comfortable on the set for you as a show uh tonight we ain't worried that's the goal that's for sure i don't know if it's an advantage or disadvantage but i'm just gonna say it's an advantage until it's not i feel like it's gotta be it's all up here. Gotta be. A little warm up, a little warm up TV before TV. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, but we will uh we'll catch you guys 130 FS1. Be there or be square. Bye. You don't want to be square. We play bowling, squares are bad. <laughs>